I'm going to talk about comparison of UART, I2C and SPI. So this topic is very important in microcontroller because without knowing the serial communication protocol, we cannot choose which type of protocol is used in our applications. So only I'm choosing this topic. Now we move on the video. So here I'm making three columns. So first column represent UART, second column I2C, third column SPI. The first comparison is related to abbreviations. So what is the abbreviation of UART? So UART means universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter. So it's an abbreviation of UART. Then come to I2C. So I2C means inter integrator circuits. So inter integrator circuit is the abbreviation of I2C. Then come to SPI. So serial peripheral interface. So it's abbreviation of SPI. Then come to second point. So second point is related to transmit signal and receive signal. So how to transmit the data and how to receive the data. In UART, we are using two signals. So one signal namely called as TXT and another signal namely called as RXT. So TXT represent transmit data, RXT represent receive data. So in UART, we have a two signals to transmit the data or receive the data. Then come to I2C. In I2C also, we have a two signals. One signal namely called as SDA and another signal namely called as SEL. So SDA represents serial data, SEL represents serial clock. So whenever the clock frequency is applied to the device, that time the data is transmitted from master to slave in serial manner. So it's a basic operation. Then come to SPI. In SPI, we have a four signals. The first signal is SCLK, serial clock signal. Then next signal, MOSI. So MOSI represent master output and slave input. Here we have a two device. One device act as a master and another device act as a slave. The master output signal is given to input of slave then next signal miso so miso represent master input and slave output so master device act as a receiving point slave device act as a transmitting point then come to ss so ss means slave select so select the slave device then come to third point so third point is related to distance so how much distance is covered in UART, lower about 50 feet. And I2C, it cover higher distance. SPI, it cover highest distance. Then fourth point. So this fourth point is related to mode of communication. So in UART, it's a synchronous mode. And I2C is a synchronous. SPI also synchronous mode. So asynchronous in the sense, it's not a common clock. So common clock pulse is not applied to the device. In I2C and SPI, we apply the common clock pulse. So common clock pulse for master device and slave device. Then next point related to number of master device used in UART, I2C and SPI. In UART, only one master device and I2C, one or more than one. SPI, one master device. Then next one regarding clock signals in UART, no common clock signal is used because it's a asynchronous mode. In asynchronous mode, there are a different clock pulse is applied to monster and slave. Then I2C, there is common clock signal between multiple monsters and multiple slaves. It's a synchronous mode of operation. Then come to SPI. In SPI, there is one common serial clock signal between master and slave device so in i2c and spi is the synchronous mode so synchronous mode in the sense common clock signal is applied to master and slave uart is a asynchronous mode there is no common clock signals is used the next point in uart hardware complexity is lesser in i2c hardware complexity is more and spi Hardware complexity is less. Then come to next point is related to data transfer rate. 
in UART, maximum data rate is about 230 kbps to 460 kbps. So 230 kbps to 460 kbps. Then I2C, it support uh, different data transfer rate. So 100 kbps, 400 kbps and 3.4 mbps. So some variant of I2C also support 10 kbps and 1 mbps then come to spi so spi usually support about 10 mbps to 20 mbps so it's the highest data transfer rate compared to uart and i2c then come to next comparison so how the data is transferred so what are the signals so what are the bit is used before and after the data signals so for 8 bit data i need to transfer one 8 bit data so before 8 bit data i can use one start bit so end of the 8 bit data used one stop bit so it's a data format for a uart then i to c so here also we can use start and stop bit and one more bit acknowledgement bit so this acknowledgement bit is mainly used to whether the data is received or not just identifying whether the data is received or not. So for every 8 bit of data, which indicate whether the data has been received or not, that's the use of acknowledgement bit. Then come to SPI. So each manufacturer has got their own specific protocol to communicate with peripherals. Hence a data set is must to know, read, write the protocol for SPI communication to establish. Then last point, there is no need for addressing since this is a one-to-one -one connection between two devices in UART. Then come to I2C, any slave connect with the master is addressed by a slave select line. A master device will have n slave select line for n slaves. So here only one master, uh, one master device or more than one master device. So that master device is controlled the respective slave device. So based on the slave select. Then come to SPI. In SPI, any slave connect with the master is addressed by slave select line. A master device will have n slave select line for n slaves. I hope you understand the concept very well. If you are watching first time in my video, kindly subscribe and support us to make a lot of videos. Thanks for watching my channel. Thank you.